I was actually working on my P2 at Piero Drogo's workshop in Modena when the P4s were built and uh, it was all hush-hush behind a curtain in the workshop, no one was allowed to go in there, but uh, as I was sort of working at Drogo's, and Drogo's the chap who really designed the body on it, um, you know, I knew quite a, found quite a lot about them. Um, but uh, having got it back here and converting it back to its original form as it ran at Daytona and latterly at uh, Brad's Hatch when Jackie Stewart drove it, uh, it's interesting to see what Ferrari did to it when they converted it into a Can-Am car. In the last race it did as a prototype for the World Championship, the Constructors' Championship, was when Jackie Stewart and uh, Chris Amon drove the car at Brands and finished second behind the Chaparral. Uh, I was driving the Marinello Concessionaire's P3 and uh, my LM was being driven by Pedro Rodriguez and um, Roy Pierpoint. And uh, so I was pretty close to the action at that time. Um, and then after that, subsequently, the car was turned into a Can-Am car and uh, it did the Can-Am series with Eamon and uh, Jonathan Williams. Then it was sold to David McKay in Australia. Jackie drove it again, I think, in Australia in the 12 Hours at Surface Paradise and uh, once or twice for David McKay. And uh, then Paul Hawkins bought it and uh, I was quite friendly with Paul. Paul. We used to share the garage at Fortis Green and uh, I took his engine down to the factory and had it rebuilt, one of the engines that was with this car. And um, it was never collected until after he was killed. But uh, yeah, Paul ran it in the South African races. And then I bought it from Paul's estate and I sold it to Al Walker. They raced it in South Africa. And then I got it back from Al Walker and sold it to Walter Medlin. And after in Florida, and uh, at one stage, Walter contacted me and said, uh, would I come over to the States and convert it into a prototype? And uh, I said, well, really, it would be better if he sent the car over to Europe. He didn't want to do that, and so it never happened. But uh, subsequently, 40 years later, today, we're doing it here. Can you go around and just explain some of the things that we've been doing? And it, there's been no time demand because we want everything perfect. You know, even if it takes longer just to keep another original bit of metal, you know, yes. that's what we're doing. Yes, well, of course, we've uh, tried to keep as much of the original material as possible. I mean, we're just in the fuel tank situation at the moment and having new tanks made which comply to the new regulations. And uh, when this car was built, it was the early days of bag tanks and they didn't have foam in them and they had to support the tanks in the car and they were held up with a sill with pins through little clips on the tank that had to be yeah. pushed up from underneath. Uh, now we're having tanks which fit in the same area, but they're filled with foam and they're joined with tubes across the chassis from one side to the other. And uh, they're self-supporting, but we have to have an uh, inspection hole in, yeah. the, fr in, in yeah. the top here to get the foam, fuel, foam in and to connect everything up. But when you, when you look at the side of the car, I mean, there's like basically 40 years old of oh, sure. original dust and, Absolutely. And, and grease. Yes. I mean, it's, it's we've, a, a time machine, really. It is, it is certainly. Um, we've added the seat belt mountings at the yeah. shoulders and seat straps. So it's straps. safe to race today. <laughs> yes, because we need those for the regulations. And also, you couldn't run the car with the original tanks in it. It has to have the new spec yeah. tanks. Um, we had to leave the engine and gearbox in while we made the tail so that we could get the air boxes Perfect. to match with the tail. And uh, we've had to make the, there was no windscreen surround, no windscreen wipers, no screen washers, nothing like that, you know, that you have to have in a prototype rather than a Can-Am car. Um, there's got the old Serpente oil cooler, which is a classic original oil cooler that uh, was Mauro Forgieri's favorite thing with an Archimedes threads 
in each tube to slow the oil down as it goes through the cooler. Um, we are having new Marshall head and fog lights. We've got the Enot big fuel caps, but inside them we've got ordinary smaller quick opening fillers because for the regulations, having fuel caps at the front of the tanks like this and they had on the GT40 was very dangerous. If they didn't shut the filler cap, you'd break from all sun and the fuel would come gushing up and the sparks on the exhaust would catch the mm -hmm. catch fire and the car, car would go off the road in a ball of fire. So uh, we are going to perpetuate that. But just for old time's sake, we're going to have the Enyots caps for show yeah. with the filler cap in the middle and the flap will lift up. But uh, yes, it's a pretty car. It, it's, it's an exciting project we started just under a year ago. Uh, was it around October last October year? last year we started on the project and uh, we got to, went to town on the front and rear subframes and all the hardware for the spare wheel carriers yeah. and that sort of thing and uh, doing what was necessary to have a body fitted on it. And we used to have a dummy run with the body off my P4 uh, and offer it up so that everything settled down and we knew where we had to go. And uh, while the buck was being made in wood uh, from my body, which was 0860, which was one of the original P4s, and uh, so that no mistakes or no diversion from the original spec could, we didn't want any accumulative error sort of copying yeah. things. So uh, it was sectioned off right the way through the car. And uh, yeah, that, that took, that took three weeks, months. Yeah, and uh, weeks, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, the body works progressed. It's, you know, it's not a quick job. No, no, but it's, it's a job worth doing because the, the price of... Yes. I mean, I, I had a spare P4 body and I had fiberglass body panels, you know, but yeah. uh, we didn't really want to incorporate those. No, we wanted It's to. all right if you're putting them on a car to race, if you're in a sort of demolition derby, you know, and you get people running into you. But uh, the problem is, with a beautiful aluminium body like this, um, you know, we don't want to get anybody running into it. <laughs> Yeah, but we also used the correct gauge. Yes, 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 we did. Uh, one of the problems with these P4s, when you come to lift the nose and tail off, you know, you tend to pick it up by this yeah. and uh, it tends to bend, so, and that will crack the paint. So we're, in, we're, we're trying to obviate that problem by stiffing it up there. Um, but it's certainly taking great shape. Yes, it's looking good.